but there are some things that every modern diesel owner can do uh, with intact emissions to help not break their trucks. Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Um, today's video is uh, in a very beautiful scenic location. Um, I just drove through a random, I was going home and just ran a little turn off, uh, like an old, like half a ghost town, but some people still live there, uh, old mining town. Uh, super cool little spot, but kind of a cool place for a video. So I thought I'd uh, go ahead and film an update video on on my truck. Um, so I have it back now finally. So uh, my last video that you guys would have seen would have been when it broke about a month ago. It broke. Um, and uh, the diagnosis at that time was simply that it lost the ability to desoot. Um, but in that month, I, I, I learned a lot and um, wanted to share it with you guys. Um, some of, some of why it broke actually, because it's easy to just kind of throw some shade on emission systems in general and just, oh, delete, delete, delete. That's the only option. But the reality is, is that for some people, deleting isn't an option. For me, it technically is halfway an option because where I live is not an emission standard. And so I could delete my truck and be okay in Utah, but I've, I've, I could never drive it to California, for example, because I mean, federally it's illegal everywhere, but they would for sure bust me for it. Right. So there's a lot of reasons to not to not delete your truck um, if you can't for legal purposes or if you don't want to because it'll avoid other warranties. You know, I imagine, for example, that if I were, were to delete my truck right now but had a transmission problem, they'd link the whole powertrain as being void, probably. Um, and so, like, I don't want to delete it until my warranty is void on my transmission anyways, right? And so, uh, but there are some things that every modern diesel owner can do uh, with intact emissions to help not break their trucks. So let's get into that. Quick interjection, I always forget to ask to please like the video and if you wouldn't mind, subscribe as well. It definitely helps the channel out quite a bit to have some engagement like that coming. Uh, my next video will be about tire size. I have, I have 37s on a stock height and I don't rub. And so I'll show you what, uh, what three factors come into play to accomplish that. But without further ado, back to the video about how my truck broke and how it was my fault. First, let's break down some myths um, about DPFs. Now, I always thought up until my last video and some of you guys in the, in the comments kind of taught me a little bit and I, I did some more Googling as well. But I always thought, for example, that the DEF, you know, I can't say DEF fluid. That's redundant, right? Because the F is for fluid. But so the diesel exhaust fluid, I always thought got sprayed onto the, onto the DPF to help it burn off the soot. Not the case. I think most people think that. The DPF is right behind the motor. And it uses all the exhaust gas and all the, the heat from the engine to heat up that DPF. Um, and I think it'll spray some, like, just straight up fuel on there, too, to burn, to burn off that soot. Um, but you need to know that, that it relies on the heat from the motor for a couple of reasons when I tell you later, okay? Now, the DEF is actually, there's, a, there's an SCR down the line of the emissions. And the DEF is actually sprayed in there to help neutralize some of the NOx gases, um, and then the, the truck emits nitrogen and water vapor, which is, I mean, that's pretty freaking cool. Like the, the, the idea of the diesel, diesel emissions is pretty sweet, um, for how clean it can make things, but it, it does suck cause it is unreliable and it's, just, it's more things to break. Um, but, but knowing that the, the DPF actually relies on heat is important because for that, the di you know, diesel motors like to be worked hard anyways, but if you don't work them hard, it's actually kind of bad for them. See, I always thought, dude, I, I kind of baby my truck for a diesel. I don't tow as much as a lot of people tow with diesels. Um, lo lots of just around town driving, long drives though, where I'm not towing anything, uh, which isn't all that bad. Um, but for the, for, for, the, for the daily driving of a diesel, um, if you're doing short little stints all the time, it never gets hot enough to start regening. And so that filter just collects the soot. And it never has a chance to burn it off because it's not working hard enough. And one of the worst things you can do with a diesel is to idle it. Because when you're idling it, the engine's not working at all. Minimal heat coming out. And so you're just collecting the soot, but it's not getting a chance to burn off. So I didn't know that. I always thought for some reason it's better to keep it idling than to turn it on and off all the time. So I'd be in like, you know, waiting for my kids at school, school pickup line. I might be idling for 10 minutes or just creeping forward, basically idling for 15 or 20 minutes or sometimes, right? Um, I go to the gas station. I wouldn't even turn off my motor to get gas to, to fuel up sometimes. I just would keep it running because I thought it was better for it just to run versus being turned on, on and off all the time. 
And so I was so much idling and so much around town driving where it never had the chance to regen. And one thing I learned is that if it starts to regen and then you turn off your truck, it doesn't know it didn't finish the cycle, right? The check mark, you know, of, uh, okay, we just regen that, you know, computer checks that box when the regen begins. So if you're not paying attention and that, it, that, that, that it's regening and you shut off that vehicle, well, now you just, all that stuff that was built up didn't get burned off. The truck sinks it did. So now it, it'll go a while again before it does a regen. And so it makes it even worse. All the short drives where it doesn't ever quite get to regen can make it pile up to the point where now it can't regen anymore. And that's what happened to my truck. I wasn't able to regen because there's too much soot in my DPF from idling too much and from, and from lots of short trips and things like that. Now, if I didn't have it under warranty still, it would have been about a $3,000 repair. So the part, the DPF costs about $1,900. Uh, the DPF is mated to uh, a catalytic converter with all the labor involved. It's about 3,000 bucks. Honestly, I thought it'd be a lot more money than that, um, just because of r things I was told about how much DPFs cost. So in, in a way, I was almost relieved. Like, oh, only three grand. It's not that bad. That's still a lot of money, though. There's a gauge for the DPF in your vehicle info settings on your, on your little gauge cluster. I didn't really ever go there very much. I was usually on like the fuel economy, tire pressure, pitch and tilt, and that kind of a thing. But if you go past some of those things, at past your temperatures, there's a DPF setting. And um, it'll tell you. Now, when I first picked my truck up, it was the computer showed it being still full from, from my old one. So it was like a fifth of the way. The gauge was like, like a fifth of the way full, basically. And on my first drive home, it, was, it said auto regeneration take, you know, happening or whatever, however it says it, right? It's about a 10, probably maybe a 15 minute process to get that, that official regen happening. Now, ever since I've driven it quite a bit, maybe almost a thousand miles. And it's always been just at zero on that gauge. So I don't know if it's just kind of constantly doing a bit of a regen um, or I just happened to miss the dedicated regen that was happening. But now after I'm driving for a while, I always go to that DPF info screen just to make sure I don't uh, all of a sudden turn my car off while it's doing a regen. And so for all us guys that have emissions still on our trucks, I think if we, if we idle it less, we um, really pay, pay attention to the regen if we're doing lots of around town driving, or so we'll, we'll, we'll be building up more, and we don't cut off the cut off the drive during a regen, our system should last quite a bit better, which obviously is nice. Uh, well, guys, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for liking and subscribing, and thank you to all you uh, OG diesel owners that comment on my videos. Usually, it's your comments that send me down a, down a small deep dive uh, to figure something out that, that I didn't know before that I used for content um, as I'm making these videos to help other newer diesel owners figure out these amazing trucks uh, so we can kind of all, you know, use them better and, and uh, enjoy them to their fullest. So uh, I appreciate all you guys and uh, I'll catch you next video.